Coming in hot is presented by Botano. The game starts now. Here are your hosts, Brent Wallace, Jason York, and Bobby Ryan. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Coming In Hot. I'm Brent Wallace alongside Jason York as Bobby Ryan is uh, probably buying another golf membership somewhere. Um, Yorkie. Uh, oh, I should say, by the way, joined yes. by uh, one of the Ottawa Senator owners, uh, Jason York, because everybody thinks uh, yeah. you're leaving the show and uh, you're already <laughs> sizing up your corner office. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. I got a bunch of the, my phone was blowing up the other day, but no, I, I don't own part of the team. I'm, uh, I'm just enjoying my summer. I'm like anybody else. I'm, I'm uh, like, listen, sure, I'm happy. My brother's part of this group. It's a large group. It's a large contingent. I think it's incredible. Um, my brother's a great guy. <laughs> so what more can I say? I, have uh, you... as, for, as for right now, though, I'm enjoying doing this show, and it's great, Wally. Like, hey, we're having I, a blast, right? Got a, I'm got a tea glad time you're later. At, got a tea time later at 2 p.m. Life is what, good. Is it at Royal Ottawa? Because that's where everything seems to get done. Are you going to see Alfie today? All roads cross at the Royal Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> that's where everything's going down. <laughs> Did, do you have your resume ready to hand to Alfie? Uh, listen, I... I'm, uh, I don't know. What are, we, what, are we, what are we doing? A podcast for the team or something? No, listen, honestly, I, I'm just, like I said, I'm just thrilled. Yep. Uh, I'm thrilled for the city. And I, I sent a text out, or sorry, a tweet out after all this went down. And honestly, I, I feel like kind of like a fan right now. I'm, I'm just. Yes. There's like a buzz going on. There's, there's like yes. a, there's still a hangover in the city right now, Wally, from everybody that's just so pleased on on what's happened. So I'm in the same boat. And you know, whatever happens with the team, whatever changes they make, who comes in, there's just there's going to be so much buzz until that happens. Um, all that stuff will take care of itself in, in due time. But uh, hey, yeah, for, for for the time being, it's uh, it's great for uh, it's great for podcasts. I well, I was at the Red Blacks yesterday. Their home openers tonight. I uh, hope everybody uh, makes their way down to Lansdowne. Is um, the number of people that want to talk about yep. what's happened and they just they're the excitement there is a huge level of excitement it's just a topic of conversation which is exactly what you want to have right you want people to discuss well your team think, the number think, one product last summer there was there's was a lot of buzz because they made the with drew coming to bring it and and it's like they say in hollywood anytime they're talking about you it's good it's it's a good thing yep. and and right now uh, with the Stanley, like, usually no one's talking about hockey right now. And like you said, everyone's talking about the Sens. Everyone's excited. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be great for season tickets. It's going to be great for the. It's going to be great. You hear this word all the time, right? Well, the brand. This is really good for the brand of the yeah. Ottawa Senators because it hasn't been this strong in a long, long time. No, and I've covered the team since '98, and there's very few times you can consider the excitement level like this. Uh, so looking forward to whatever transpires. I'm going to throw this out though. Yes. If you remember when Eugene Melnick bought the team, the first thing he did was brought in the Eagles Eagles concert and had a concert. It's like, so here's the thing too. If like people always remember bad Melnick, there was a time when it was good Melnick. Like at the beginning, he was beginning. He, he was beloved by the city of Ottawa. I remember he'd come on. And people loved him. Like he came in and, and, yep. and took this team out of bankruptcy, and there was there was a lot of good early on. Yep. Um, and that Absolutely. Eagles, everybody remembers that Eagles concert. But like, what a way to kick things off! And uh, yeah, good. that you think back, that's probably the last time this city was was buzzing like like it is uh, the last yeah. few days. I think he paid two million bucks for the Eagles to come in. <laughs> but the one thing I remember about that total power move. Oh, like absolutely, mic drop right is. <laughs> Uh, that the Eagles didn't really talk and they didn't seem to be that excited to be there. It was like they just wanted their money and they wanted to go. I was <laughs> a little, take, I was a little I'll disappointed. Take my two, my two yeah. mil and see you later. Yeah. Anyway, it was a fantastic night. You and then, and you're it? right. Here's a question for you. Uh, if, if you could get any band right now to open up the <laughs> new sale of the Senators, oh. who are you taking? That's a hey, great question, Yorkie. That's a great. We need a poll question or something. Yorkie's poll question. So you, I don't. You can't do Justin Bieber because he's a Leaf guy. He's he's Matthews boy. Yeah, you're not the weekend. Biebs. You gotta do the weekend. 
Why are you taking the weekend? Uh, well, he has ties to Ottawa. He might be a little sour, though, wasn't he? Be, like, I'm, well, I'm hoping he can look past that. He's the <laughs> only guy. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> reports reports <laughs> were out there that he was in a group trying to buy the team. Listen, hey, you didn't get the team, but would you, you want to come play a yeah. concert for us? Two million? Just forget, you know, it's all good, right? It's all good. And then Ryan Reynolds comes out and introduces them, and then it's all it's great. Is I, I, I can't think of another Paul Anka. Like I can't think Paul of, Anka. Of <laughs> what do you want to have like? <laughs> so hey, nothing against funny... Paul Anka. I love Paul Anka, but I got a come funny on, story. Wally. Like, are you are you bringing the roof down with Paul Anka? Like, he, by the I got a so, but he was Wallace, just on a podcast. Are, are the Wall- Hold on, are Mister and Mrs. Wallace going to start it off with the first waltz? He has a little center <laughs> ice, little waltz. Listen. Paul Anka. Paul Hanka was just on a podcast. I, I don't know how it popped up in my feed somewhere. He was discussing stories about the Rat Pack on the Las Vegas Strip. Anyway, so in uh, two, 2019, I do the World Championships. We're driving from uh, Vienna to uh, Slovakia, to Bratislava, between training camp and the start. And so my cameraman and I decided we would drive it just to see what it looked like. It was an eight-hour drive instead of flying. Mm-hmm. We said we're going to stop in Hungary, uh, Budapest, for the day and uh, have lunch and then tour around because it was on the way yeah like this is great as we get into downtown uh it was like you know when you're in ottawa and the president shows up or whatever all the flags are flying american like the entire canal is lit lit with posts or signs flags they were all pictures of paul anka (laughs) paul anka was headlining in budapest and i was like this is wild to me so Paul um, Anka, if like, you're li- Paul, Paul yeah. Anka, if you're listening, I I I love Paul Anka, but well, I, apparently you're, you you're don't. P- you're picking Paul Anka to open up for the Sens. <laughs> I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'll take Bruce Springsteen. He's gonna he'll no. be my con- I'm taking, no. I'm it has to have an Ottawa connection. So basically, you're down to Alanis right now. Well, I'm going Alanis over Paul Anka. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Anka can open. <laughs> Maybe you'd like it. I think you're Brian, in that wheelhouse I'll now. Take- Brian Adams is on tour right now. Oh, I'm, yeah. Brian Adams is on tour. Do a little pit stop here. Hey, Brian, yeah. come on in. Here's, here's a here's Shania. A no, Avril Lavigne and Shania. Oh, Napa, Ontario. There you go. That's it. Close. Was in Ottawa that Avril came on stage with Shania and launched her career. Little little skater boy for you, Wally. We're so I far see, off topic. I could see you rocking out the skater boy. Um, Although you got your haircut, I see. I did. I did. It's pretty uh, good. It's for opening night for the Red Blacks. I, wa- I wanted to see Shaggy Wally for the rest of the summer. <laughs> I I can't. The COVID really was hard on me because of the haircut, how long it went. All right. As long as it's ever been in my life. You got a Paul Can we Anka get back sign? to the you show? Got, you got a Paul Anka poster in your room? Right <laughs> <laughs> I got Sammy Davis Jr., Paul Anka, Frank Sinatra. Oh, yeah. I got the whole, every, I had the rat back. <laughs> That's why when I go to Vegas, I only go to uh, downtown to the old place because that's where all the stuff happens. Well, Free Vegas, Monster. who did who did who did Vegas bring in for game uh, game two? That did it was like an old school Vegas act. He's been there forever. Uh, he, he did, uh, Wayne Newton. Wayne Newton. That's right. Yeah. So he's also on your list. I would I would have to think. I right? can't know Wayne he's Newton. Got, yeah, I can't look at him because his face is so plastic. That's not very nice, I know, but that's what it looks like. Maybe we'll get. Uh, I could see you being a big Simon Garfunkel guy too. Right? Oh, bring the, bring the roof down. With yes, him. Uh, I love the boxer. That's a hello, great song. Hello, yeah. darkness, my old friend. That will get us rocking, eh? So I don't know whether I should tell you this story or not, but I'll, 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 I'm gonna. Yes. So I used to be an air cadet when I was in uh, junior high school. Uh, ended up as the lead drummer. By the way, we would like, play I Scarborough see, Fair. I could see you kind of like uh, Colonel Mauser. Is it there? <laughs> what? <We're... laughs> Do you know yeah, who that just, is? By the way, no. I just want to. I just want to move on with the show. Can, you know what? Police Let's Academy. Just... Police Academy. Oh, that's a good too. That was a good movie. Mauser. Um, okay, finish your story. I'll stop cutting you off. No, we're, we're done. Uh, Cadet, we're moving Cadet, on to Cadet uh, Wallace. All right. Uh, this show is proudly presented by Botano. Uh, go to Botano.ca, download the app, the award-winning app, state-of-the-art, fastest, most user-friendly advanced betting app for your mobile or tablet. 
Uh, have the amazing world of sports always with you at Botano. Hundreds of betting options for events and try same game parlays with Bet Builder. Also, live in game betting, the most competitive odds in the market. Uh, get your summer fix in with Botano. The game starts now. And uh, Renfrew Pro Tape been with us since day one. Uh, the best hockey tape in the world. I have got no problem saying that because it is true. It's the original hockey tape. Uh, moisture resistance, hand terrible, helps with your puck control. Look them up at RenfrewPro.com. As always, it's the one with the green core. That's how you know it's Renfrew. And if you're on Instagram, uh, give them a follow at RenfrewPro. Don't forget to tag your teammates for unlimited entries. And you can share your story for 10 bonus entries. Uh, for 35 years, BEI has built its reputation on providing great service with unmatched quality of work. Uh, and the BEI team is putting forth the same commitment into building your new dream home. Escape the city with the big city price tags. Buy a house where Bobby Ryan wants to live. Uh, relocate to the Wren subdivision, a project by BEI Homes just an hour west of Canada. You can enjoy vibrant small town atmosphere with all the modern conveniences. Uh, detached homes with 70 front footage with water and sewer. And of course, uh, semi-detached homes with plenty of affordable, upgradable options. Uh, many options and floor plans to choose from. Prices starting low as $500,000. Uh, trust a quality build builder with a seven-year Terry and home warranty for peace of mind living. Go to BonisherHomes.com. Also, uh, slow down in construction zones. Uh, and uh, by AG1, where we get our plenty of energy, if you will. 75 multivitamins and nutrients all jammed into one delicious, healthy drink. Take it in the morning. Just add some water into a 12-ounce uh, AG1 glass you get for your when you order your first purchase. Um, and uh, enjoy, by the way. You will feel great. It's good for gut health and all kinds of things. So uh, AG1, go there, uh, sign up, go to athleticgreens.com slash coming in hot. Your first order, get uh, five free travel packs and a lifetime supply. Oh, sorry, one year supply of uh, vitamin D. <laughs> hey, yeah, no, I can't, I can't I mean. give away everything. Yeah, the whole company, like, what the hell? <laughs> anyway, I should, uh, oh, next time I'll read that. I couldn't find the ad. My wife was in my office, and now I can't find anything. I gotta take um, some. Of, I gotta take some of that. I don't know. Ever since I got older, you know, when you're up night and you're watching the hockey game, you get the gurgly gut, and you're like, "Yes, maybe it's the Miss Vicky's chips I'm eating." <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I don't know what it could be. <laughs> so I will bring you some. Yeah, I've got uh, some travel packs, Yorkie. I'm gonna drop some off to you. Okay, do that. Ag one. Nice. Um, all right. Uh, quickly back to uh, the sale, because it, obviously it's the biggest thing. I'd like one thing I meant to check and I forgot. I'm going to ask Ian uh, to write about it is ticket sales. What were, I, I'm going to assume that I bet you there was a bump yesterday For uh, sure. or Tuesday or Wednesday in uh, ticket sales. I'm just curious if that were the case. Uh, now here. OK, so with everything, there's always going to be some kind of uh, negativity or just there's a downside. Right. And that is. There's a lot of nervous people right now in the building that work just, just on staff, um, and right and and right they don't know what's going to happen, and so for those people, uh, I I feel for you because that that's tough to not know what's about to happen and you you're, you're kind of just in limbo. So um, we do understand and appreciate that there is some people that uh, aren't all celebrating right now. They are uh, just concerned about what may happen with their jobs. So that I appreciate. And speaking of which. Uh, Yorkie, uh, yesterday there was the news across uh, Bell Media Landscape. 1,300 jobs were eliminated. We And two here that were key members in Ottawa, uh, Lever Sage and Sean Simpson uh, at TSN 1200. Uh, I, I reached out to both of them. I, for me, it felt like going through it all over again. Mm -hmm. I reached out and said, whatever I can do to help, you let me know. I've got resources mm -hmm. and stuff. And uh, they were very vital parts of our community. They worked their asses off. Yeah, no, I... I spoke to to both yesterday too it's it's you, you work there I, I started off on the radio tsn 1200 it was back then the team 1200 it it's uh it's a big part of the community and yep. uh guys guys wear a lot of hats there like i'll say this uh about lee lee lee, lee worked really hard there and he was there for 20 years so that's tough man i hate seeing stuff like that and that's the thing media business is a tough business um yep. it's uh anyways really feel for those guys and all the and all and all the people across Canada just uh just a big gut punch yesterday for a lot of people and uh you know is what, what can you say except you're thinking about them and you feel terrible yeah. for them 
Yeah. So I, and just to, to make it public, like we just thought you did fantastic work. And so yep. um, one thing I do remember was the outpouring of support I did get on social media and from, and so it meant a lot to hear from. Uh, and I think that's important. So if you're on social media, I want to send them a note. Uh, I know they're, they're appreciative of it. Um, so last comment about the sale, I think, uh, there's a, so uh, Bruce wrote an article today about there's not going to be any changes for a while. Um, and that may be, I believe that he's right in that there, there won't be any say at the draft. There won't be any say as free agency starts. That being said, they're not trading Alex to signing Alex to or doing anything of significant value without posting or sorry, without a phone call or something to the prospective new ownership group. Oh, well, of course. <laughs> like it's <laughs> well, just put yourself in that position. If the article your... the article states that well, it's just business as usual for well, Pierre Dorian and company. Technically speaking, there's a process to go through now. So there has to you got to go to the board of governors, the other um, there's got to be a sign off. It's going to take some time for this deal to officially close. Yeah. So it is business as usual because you got to prepare for the draft. Um, there's no jobs. Like there's so much speculation right now. And I feel for everybody, no yep. matter how you feel about somebody, whether it's DJ Smith, Pierre Dorian, anybody in the office, it's tough because there's a great, uh, there's a great unknown and all the people in the office there. So it, it's a, it's a really, it sucks for a lot of people, yep. but, it's career suicide if you're going to go in there and not inform the new owner of something you're going to do. It's just common sense. Um, so, yes, it's business as usual. For sure it is. Um, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be get done. But, um, yeah, like he's – Michael Andler is going to be in the know for sure. It's just yeah. – at least that's what I would do. Like if, well, if I, I wouldn't do something and then – and then surprise, I did this. It's like that's yeah. I I found we out traded news. Brady Kachuk. No, and 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 uh, but it is business as usual. It's um, nothing's changed yet. It's going to take a while for sure. Um, yeah. But I like when I when I think about things, I try to put myself in that situation. If I'm in that situation, I'm going to make a, make some calls. I'm probably in touch quite a bit because I want to build a relationship with, with sure. new ownership. And I, I want to sell myself to new ownership. I want to make sure that they know that I'm going to do um, a great job for them and I want to keep my job. So that's, that's, that's just common sense. Well, not everybody has common sense. No, it's, it's, so, it's for sure. I just no, wanted it's... to point out just that we all say that there's Michael Landlauer doesn't have any say, well, if you go ahead and trade, I don't know, Brady Kachuk and Thomas should not maybe going to be back. Wow. You don't think Michael Landlauer is going to walk away? If if you were to sell me your house, Yorkie, and I said, okay, I'm going to sign a deal and agree to buy it, and then you decide to dig up the front yard, well, maybe I like maybe I don't want it anymore. You want to, are you saying you want to buy my house? It's for sale right now, Wally. I've got, I know. A, special, I, I got a special deal for you. Come on over. We'll have a coffee. We'll talk. I can't kind of afford... Nice the butler got, servers that you have at the estate. Got a nice dog here. You can visit. <laughs> dog doesn't come oh, wait, with it though. Wait, dog, dog part doesn't... of the deal? Oh, no, okay. <laughs> not a chance. I know you're a dog guy. Charlie's coming it. with me. Um, yeah. You no, know what? It's... Sorry, go ahead. I, well, just on the note of the dog, I've got to look after Kyle Bukoskis, his dog, uh, Barry, oh. uh, soon for the weekend. Hey, listen, so. I got to give Kyle a shout out, by the way. Good, good friend of mine. Uh, for most people that watch the Stanley Cup playoffs, man, for a young guy, Wally, you, you've been in that business for a long time. Does he ever do a great job? I worked with Kyle when he first started in Montreal. He was part of our broadcast crew. And we used to say, John Bartlett, myself, and our producer, Scott Lynch, were like, this kid is going to be a star. Like, he is just a natural. He's, <laughs> he's so good. Smart kid, too, Wally. He's and great, great hair. You must like the great. hair, eh? Like I'm little, jealous, a little jealous, a little yeah, jealous. Little, yeah, but, good, but uh, I, can, I don't have the same kind of gel budget he has. Um, <laughs> is I think, and I've said this before, I think without a doubt, he is the best in game host probably in North America, bar none. He's great, he is great. so good at what he does. And I just yeah. I sent him a text right after he did, uh, 
I don't even think it was the fountains. I think it was before the fountains. It was. I think it was opening night, maybe. Yeah. I'm like, my God, you're good. Uh, great job so, as usual. I'll give you a secret, too, to uh, all, all the people who care about hair listening right now. My uh, good friend Dino, my old neighbor, he's responsible for that salad. Fernandino. It's not Fernandino. Fernandino. Yeah. yeah. Fernandino. Fernandino. Dino. Dino's, Dino's been working on that, on that rug at Kyle's forever. So there's three brothers, Fern, Dino, and Frank, yep. uh, if I'm not mistaken. And Frank is the one that cuts my hair. Nice. So nice. I tried to get Kyle to come over, but he's like, no, I can't. I got to get. I only go, uh, I only I only go, go to Dino. To yeah. I go to Dino. I have a coffee. Get some anyway, done. Talk shop. Kyle, Kyle is by far. I, and for like, yeah. uh, has a person who's done it, totally jealous of how good <laughs> and smooth he is. Yeah, he's totally. Good. Really talented. Super talented. Yeah, it's and yeah, super, it's annoying. super uh, like he's very he's very quick too. Like he's got a quick little wit about him. He's I, yes. I, I anyway, I'm tired of pumping his tires because he's he's young and he's got everything going for him. You're he's getting old. married soon. He doesn't live too far from me. Anyway, um, eh, all right. There is a uh, one of the things I saw posted after the the ownership was, well, there's no celebrity involvement. We could have had Ryan Reynolds and we could have had the weekend and we could have had Snoop Dogg. And somehow people think that that's like a complete negative to have Michael Andlauer. Um, I understand the frustration of not having somebody that you get to watch in the movies, but I don't think it translates necessarily. And I've watched welcome to Wrexham. I think he's done a phenomenal job, but I don't know that that necessarily translates to uh, being able to build a national hockey league champion so i'll set the table i'll set the table for our listeners here so for sure people got excited ryan reynolds was here snoop like so if snoop's involved in the ownership group is he moving to ottawa no is ryan reynolds moving to ottawa and setting up roots here no he's a busy guy he's got a lot on his plate uh i love ryan reynolds by the way he's got all kinds of stuff going on you and i disagree on the musical with real will ferrell i like it you hate it God, it's terrible. Although, although I might have had a few old fashions while I was watching it, so maybe that had something to do with it. But here's my point. Uh, Michael Ann Lauer is going to be all in on the Ottawa Senators. Reports are he's going to move here. He's going, this is his life's passion. He is going to dig in and put 100% effort. Not that everybody else won't either, but it's one thing when you have all kinds of different things in your life going on versus this is my main priority in my life. Obviously he's got his business, which, which has made him billions of dollars, but he is, he's here because first and foremost, this guy wants to win. And at the end of the day, this is a professional sports franchise. It's about winning. It's not about yes. that other stuff. The other stuff, the other stuff is, is extra it's cool. it's gravy. It's, it's cool, whatever you want to call it. But I'll tell you what, it's not cool if your team's a 500 team and you're, and you're doing whatever on the side, what's cool is what we just witnessed a few days ago, uh, the Vegas Golden Knights lifting the Stanley Cup. Like, at the end of the day, that's what every true sports fan here in Ottawa wants. They, they don't, you know, it'd be great to be, hey, look, there's a movie about the team or, or whatever. Whatever the, the case may be, that stuff's great. But that, that to me, is, is the most important thing. And that, to me, is why Michael and Lauer is the right guy to own this team. This is the best guy to own this team. And it's not yeah. saying the other groups wouldn't have been good. I think this is the best scenario for what this market needs. And don't forget, if you don't win in this market, if you don't win in this market, it, it's very tough to sell out your building, to get people out to the game because it's expensive going to hockey games. It's a big commitment. It's a lot easier when you have a great team. And look at his track record too. Memorial Cup, two championships, uh, or, or sorry, two OHL championships, two Memorial Cups. This guy's a winner. Like, this guy is passionate, and I've said this from day one. Um, he wants to win a Stanley Cup, and he wants to do it right here in Ottawa, so people should be pumped. Like, this team is going to do everything possible to win, yeah. and that's why, it's the, that's why, at the end of the day, the right person got the team. And, and the, there's just a great feeling around it, which is what yeah, is exciting. And we talked about this too. The the, you know, obviously I'm I'm happy because my brother's got a got a yeah. stake in the team. But there's other people too, prominent people in the city, important people in the city, people that are all in for the right reasons. So, 
Now we've said we've we've last show we we talked about this a lot. We're talking about it today, but it, it, yeah, that's the truth. It's to me to me the best case, the best scenario turned out for the Ottawa Senators, and the right guy got the team. Uh, I, oh, I meant to bring this up just as a side note the other day. Uh, so when uh, Gillette sold to Molson and Ann Lauer back in 2009, the Montreal Canadiens, uh, Bob Ganey was the general manager. Yep. Uh, he stayed on and then he resigned in January ish. I think it was who took over as GM of the Montreal Canadiens, Yorkie. Was it who Ray did Jean? they was hire? It, was it Ray Jean Hool? No, he was, was he, before he was, it was Hool, then Ganey, then after Ganey, man, uh, I think it's I was your buddy. Pl- was my buddy? Yeah, the ghost. Oh, Pierre Gauthier. That's right. Pierre yeah. Gauthier. Oh, so, yeah. I, sh- I should know this. We give thanks to Pierre before dinner here at the York family <laughs> house. He gave me three contracts. <laughs> he gets a Christmas that, card every year. Uh, yeah. Here's it. This is the key. If you want to survive in the NHL and when you're a decent player, like you're not a star player, like you're a decent player, just find one guy that likes you. Find one guy that likes you, and uh, you can usually hang around for a while. There's been a That's... few of those lately. They just they they follow. The, I'll say Paul Maurice brought in the Stahl brothers right into yeah. Florida. Yeah. Um, there's a few others. Anyway. So to go, I told you for people that don't know the backstory. Um, when I was in Detroit, I was just a prospect. I was a pretty good player. I was probably Detroit's number one guy coming up the system. It took me three years to get there, but the ghost Pierre. I was assistant GM in, in Anaheim and was the guy that was scouting and brought me in. And then he got the job in Ottawa, traded for me in Van Allen uh, in year one with, of Jacques Martin. And then Pierre goes to Anaheim five years later to run Anaheim. Oh, guess what? I'm signing in Anaheim. <laughs> so good. good and you. then he got fired. And then the very next, as soon as he's fired, guess what? Guess who's out the, guess who's out the front door? <laughs> me. <laughs> Get out of here. Uh, well, all hail Pierre Goche. Yeah, uh, yeah. Very smart guy. Very smart guy, right? <laughs> Extremely intelligent. I don't know. Like, he was the GM. And I was in Ottawa, and <laughs> he was around in Montreal, and I, I barely spoke to him. Like, he just... He acquired me three times. Of course he's super smart. No, I don't think that he is. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> You're just... Well, coming from the guy who's number one performer to see live as Paul Anka. <sighs> I'm trying to come up with an Ottawa person, and I threw out Paul Anka because nobody was probably heard him sing who's under the age of 63. You gonna, are you going to get like a little ascot, like smoking jacket? Ascot yes, I would. I guys, absolutely would. The old guy neck covering? Yes, totally. You're not, you're not getting a turkey neck yet, are you? You getting the turkey neck going? No, you're, Chris you're Schwartz is working me out. No, I'm, I'm a fine <laughs> specimen. <laughs> Look at this temple. Um, uh, okay, let's move on. Uh, Mark Stone, by the way, uh, continues with the Ottawa tie-ins to the show here today. Yep. Congratulations, being a Stanley Cup champion. As people don't maybe remember, Michael Amadio uh, played five games for the Sens. And Bob Lowe's, who was a longtime chief scout, uh, chief amateur scout for the Sens, also got to hoist the cup in, uh, in Vegas. So I just, I'm so happy for Mark Stone. Like totally. what, a guy. what a guy. And he said all things go to the Royal Ottawa. New Royal Ottawa member as well. Oh. <laughs> oh. All all signs point into the Royal Ottawa. Um, so, interesting. He, uh, uh, by the way, Mark Stone, in my opinion, and listen, Marcia, so Eichel, Hill, I, I would have, if I would have had a vote, I would have voted Mark Stone for Con Smythe. I, I just, man, what a. We all know this here in Ottawa. Every facet of the ice, he is one of the best in the business. Like, you want offense, he'll score for you. You want him to play hard D, he's great in his own zone. The takeaways, the penalty kill, the power play, the leadership, playing hurt. I just, I, I know goal scoring is 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 the sexy thing. Like, you always yeah. look at goals. And, and hey, Marcia so scored some huge goals. What a player. Man, he elevated, but you just can't ignore all the facets that Stone brings to the game, and, and that would have been my pick. And you can't go wrong with any of those guys I mentioned, but I just think 
There's so much other things Stone brings to the plate, which we all know here in Ottawa. Um, I, I would have voted for him for Conn Smythe. I just, he's, he was such a great story. Like, the, remember the first round? The guy was playing basically with, uh, I don't even know what you call it. Like, he could barely move. He had to leave practice yeah. a couple times. Just that kind of resiliency and that kind of leadership, what that does to inspire the rest of your team, like, it's little things like, that's a, I'm sorry, it's a big thing. Like, it's just part of the Mark Stone package. What, what, a, what a shame. What a shame that, that he had to leave town. And, and, and I know you can say, well, maybe if he's here, they're a better team. They don't get Brady. They don't get Stutzla. There's, there's all that. But, hey, maybe, maybe if he's here, they would have won. Who knows? I just – guys like that, you like to see lifers with, uh, with your organization because they just, they're just such good people. Uh, good players. It's the whole, it's everything that that encompasses Mark Stone. Well, a couple of points. Brady Kachuk was already here. Yeah. I'm Sorry, I mean Stutzla. I know, but I'm just you know, like, and I've seen yeah. no, no, but I've seen it on social media. People like, well, maybe it's they don't have these players. Brady but, was still here. Yeah. But my point, uh, the one thing about the Con Smythe is they don't vote on leadership, right? The Con Smythe is never part of leadership it's either so you made a big save or you scored a big the, goal what's, mark what's stone scored a hat trick in the clinching game for like the, the first the time defini- ever. what's the definition of the con smythe trophy do you know the definition uh, playoff mvp so you're the most valuable player yeah. that helped your team win the stanley cup right yeah so if you're the most valuable player you you with without you i know you could say that the argument with marcia so scored those goals but I just think all those things I mentioned about Stone. It's just okay, here's a question. This the would guys, be the question then. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Which one of the, you you have to sit one player out for the Stanley Cup final or the clinching game? Are you sitting Jonathan Marcheseau or Mark Stone? And I think that answers your question. You're sitting Marcheseau. Exactly. The, the two most important forwards on that team. Well, actually, another guy, and people are going to laugh at this, but he is a glue guy on that team, and he didn't deserve to win the Stanley Cup. William Carlson was so important to to that team, what he was doing at both ends of the ice. Listen, you got to score to win goals. You need guys that can score big goals, but it's it's the game in, game out of guys that play the hard minutes. I mean, I was so impressed with William Carlson. Like, I like, because being a defenseman, I have a strong appreciation for guys that play. Like, if I'm in the last 30 seconds of a game, I'm not putting Marcia so on the ice. No disrespect to Marcia so. I want to I want to score, and I'm down a goal. He's on the ice. But if I'm protecting a lead, I'm not putting him on the ice. Right. But I'm putting Carlson on the ice, and I'm putting Stone. But the thing with Stone, you're putting him on on both situations, whether you want a goal or you're protecting a goal. Right. And, and to me, that's why he's your most valuable player. I, I agree with you. Um uh, so, and anyway, congrats to Mark Stone. By the way, Bob Lowe's was the one who drafted Mark Stone in Ottawa uh, yeah. and fought, well, I guess, fought for him at, in the sixth round. Uh, that's one of his claims is he gets to say, I was the one Crazy, that picked eh? uh, Mark Stone. Yeah. Sixth so, round. And, I love and he's, he's not a great skater. Yeah. Like, there's nothing. You don't look at him and go, what a superstar player when you see him skate. Yeah. This is what everybody thinks to – because you hear that's about the NHL all the time. You got to be, it's about speed. It's about speed. And the biggest element that separates NHL players from American Hockey League players or guys that make it is it's your, the ability for your brain to process a situation and make a decision. Like people can call it hockey sense, but I, I call it your processor, yep. how quickly you process things. Yep. Stone processes things probably better than anybody in the, in the league. And people will say, well, McDavid... Yeah, for sure. But don't forget, McDavid's blessed with, like, the speed of, of the, the greatest speed in the world. Stone doesn't have that. So think, I know. Think, about, think about what Stone has to do to play at this level. His brain is working at such a level, it's incredible. It's incredible because he's not a good skater, but he just yeah. – it's also called spatial awareness, too. His spatial awareness when he has the puck, whether to slow down, speed up, like, we used to have guys in practice. You would see some guys practice. If you came to an NHL practice, you'd say, oh my God, that guy must be your best player. Like, he's, he's the fastest guy. He's got the best shot. We're like, no, he's our best practice player. <laughs> but you, oh, yeah, you, those you guys. Drop, you drop yeah. the puck, and you, and you put 10 bodies on the ice and two goaltenders, and all of a sudden, this guy's spatial awareness and his processor just doesn't work at the same level as some other guys. And that's the difference between great players and guys that just never really – 
get to the next I, level. Uh, by the way, Mark Stone uh, ordered AG1 from us, and so that's part of the reason why he's so smart. <laughs> is uh, The practice player guys always make me laugh. Like They just dazzle in practice. They just Everything is just crisp yeah. and smooth, all the drills. And you're like, what happened to this guy in a game? He just he can't think. But, boy, it's, they're so much fun to watch in practice. I know. There's... I'm trying to think of some guys. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus of, of great practice players, but there's lots of them. And there's guys that are there's guys that are in practice that are just awful, like drill busters. Yes. How how is this guy on the team? But then you play a little scrimmage at the end of practice, and it's he's the he's, he's got he three figures, goals. He figures it out. It's just uh, you know who the who is the best player you ever watch practice, and I don't mean a bad hockey player. I, I mean. Who is the best player you ever watched in practice? So I'll tell you, I'll tell you who's the best player I've ever seen in non-structured uh, elements before training camp. It's Sean Donovan. Dono is, and Dono's good in the games too. Like Dono a, was a great, gritty third, fourth line guy that you could elevate. You remember Dono's run in uh, Calgary? He was outstanding when Calgary went to the finals. But I remember when I came to Boston. And we were doing an unstructured scrimmage. Chera was out there, Mark Savard, Phil Kessel. And I hadn't met Dono yet. Dono and I hadn't met. I, had, I was just coming to Boston the first time, and so was he. And I'm like, holy shit. I can't believe how fast Sean Donovan, how good he is. He was scoring four goals out there. I'm like, wow. And, uh, yeah, it was just, it was incredible. And if you go watch, like, Dono still plays a little, like, if we'll do an alumni event or a pickup game, he still... His engine, his motor is like he still gives her. Like he just. Oh yeah, yeah. He's got. I the, used to watch like, him come out uh, at oh, the end, or yeah. sorry, um, to work so out the injured guys. Yeah. Right. He's so so when he's he's the player development coach, and he's he, and I remember specifically Bobby Ryan uh, when he was coming back, yeah. and Dono does the drills harder, better than most guys I've watched who are ten years younger than him by far. Yeah. He just whips around, and they're so the players are all pissed, right? They're like, Fuck "You, Dono," um, but the best player I ever saw in practice, or the one player I would love to watch practice, was Sidney Crosby, by far. Yeah, he, yeah. The stuff he can do uh, at full speed in practice, like I, I, I heard this story one time. He told Cody CC when CC got traded to to Pittsburgh, he goes. You just give me the puck within five feet of me. That's all I ask for, and I will take care of the rest. Yeah, we and I've watched same. him full speed down the wall, take it from his skate on the back and put it on his stick like nothing. <clears throat> so we used to have a saying, and I, I used to say this. And I used to, when I finished playing, I used to do a trick with the kids in practice because I was still half decent. I like guys, <laughs> you can't get you can't give a good player a bad pass, and that's what guys would say to you. You can't give a good player a bad. You, you put it anywhere in the vicinity, he'll pick it up off the skate, yeah. off the stick, off the backhand. Uh, Brett Hull used to do this after practice back when he was playing in Dallas with Mike Manano. He would tell them to fire it as hard as they could across the ice and in a position where he could barely get it, and he would try and one-time it. And he'd get it every single time and get a ton on it. Like he would practice bad passes. Like smart coaches do that too. Like mm -hmm. you're always make the pass as good, make the and for sure you want the pass as good, but you have to practice. It's very rare you get a perfect pass through traffic. Like you watch these guys, like they're they're doing exactly what you say. Like they're picking things up. I'll tell you another s quick story here though. On uh, you, you brought you, you you sparked a memory here about about elite players like Crosby. Yeah. When I played with Paul Korea in Anaheim, he is man. He is so. Uh, what do you call, I don't know if it's ADD or whatever the word is, like cerebral. So, he, he's so focused and he had to, after every single practice, he'd go to center ice and he'd take a hundred backhands. This guy had one of the best backhands I'd ever, I'd, I'd ever seen. And he used a pretty well, a straight stick. So he'd go at center ice and he'd take a hundred backhands and he'd practice hitting the center ice line that goes up the boards. And he'd do it every day, every single day, yeah. uh, at least a hundred backhands. And people are like, Paul Korea's got one of the best backhands in the game. Well, yeah, because he practices it every single day at least 100 times. Like, these guys don't get good. Even Crosby. Like, Crosby, same thing he, as Korea. He yes. uses a pretty straight pretty straight stick and tiny, like little tiny stick. 
Uh, but Korea was, uh, man, that guy, he, he worked really hard. Um, and you know what? It, he's one of the guys I wish could have had a chance to play in today's NHL where you're not getting cross-checked all the time, at least in the regular season. It, you, there's a little more space. you can, Because he was a special, special player. Uh, back when him and Solani were running wild in Anaheim, they were a, man, they were a pleasure to watch. Uh, you say that Bobby Ryan, uh, sorry, Bobby Ryan, uh, Sidney Crosby, I would watch do the same thing after practice, shooting yep. a ton of shots. Wow. Joel Pavelski and you hear Bakes talk about, uh, Jimmy Baker talk about when he was doing San Jose games. Pavelski every day after practice, even Brady Kachuk. Why is Brady Kachuk so good in front of that? Well, after every practice, he sits there and he tips uh, 50 to 100 bucks. It's, it's, it's repetition, repetition, repetition. And it, that's... Yep. It's that's that's how pros get so good at anything. It's uh, it's uh, it's doing things over and over and over again. And you go back if you go back to most pro professional athletes to their childhood, and there's a great book by the way uh, to read about this. It's called The Talent Code. It talks about how you develop this kind of stuff, and it's just from doing it over and over and over again and doing it. And the most focused kids become the best at it because when they're doing it, they actually enjoy it. Like people wonder, well, I put my kids in all this stuff and they're just not, they're not as good as these other kids. And I'm like, well, yeah, it just doesn't work that way. Even if you put your kids in everything, doesn't mean they're going to be great at it. Right. They still have to have that thing inside them that when they practice it, they're practicing it to perfection. That's, and that's what Crosby has. That's obviously what Matthews has, which all these guys have. It's, it's almost like they have a, an obsessive compulsive disorder to continue to practice on stuff while yep. other people wouldn't. It's true. It's, um, it's crazy. It's crazy. Wally. I used to sit outside of my, uh, lived in a little bungalow in Nepean. I had this little, uh, strip of, uh, a chimney on the side of my house. And I would sit there for hours and just whip the ball and try and catch it. And like the shit we did to, to, uh, to keep ourselves busy when we were kids, it was, it was, uh, compared to nowadays. Does anybody, by the way, this brings up a good point. I was saying with my kids, pedal their bike anymore. Bikes Every bike's got a motor on it now. Man, I was I was down here the other day. I'm I'm, I'm seeing all these people. Now we're sounding like get off Two my old lawn, men. guy. Yeah. We're like get off uh, my lawn. <laughs> ah! Get off my lawn. I'm seeing people in the scooters now. I'm like, yeah. My anyways, I, go for I always send my for kids. My kid, yeah, he doesn't ever bike anywhere. I'm like, that's that, those are pedals. Um. It's a funny story about bad passes is uh, I would take my kid, we go, he rollerblades in, uh, in the, in the tennis court and I'd practice bad passes with him because I, I can't make a pass. So I just tell him that I'm trying on purpose to give him bad passes. So I don't have to ever find a way to put it on his blade. He's now good at taking bad passes because they're at his ankles and hey, everything. Two, 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 two things you got to do when kids are young. Uh, number one, you got to whip passes at them. You got to whip passes at them, and then you got to go around, and you got to see if they're holding their sticks hard. And if they're not, you bang them out of their hands. People might get <laughs> mad at you, and they think, "Look at him, he's being no, no." You got to hold on to your stick. Yep. I guess true. that would be called bullying now, though, right? It's not bullying. It's parenting, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it's parenting. Uh, all right. Uh, I think we just got uh, I, Gavin. Do you have the pick? Here is. Oh. I can't see it though. I wanted to see the blade of Paul Korea's stick. Um, that's not it. But I, I, I just... used to ha I used to have one, but I think after I moved, I think oh, I yeah? somehow lost it. Yeah, I used to, he used the two piece Easton. He used that oh that brownish Easton you see there, and he had the composite Easton blade, and there was barely any curve on it. I tried using his pattern for a while, and I had a tough time getting it up to the top corner. I'm like, eh, I need so... a little more curve on my stick. So I have one of those brown Easton aluminum, whatever, and those um, the blades, they, like the sticks, they would have names of players on them. And it's mine, it's Kachuk, but it's Daniel Kachuk, and it's spelled differently. It's not Keith or Brady Kachuk. Oh. Yeah, it's, there's a Z in it in the middle of it somewhere. Anyway, it always makes me laugh. Daniel Kachuk. Korea's an, uh, interest, Korea's an interesting dude, by the way. I went to, I might have told you this before, I went down to see him about five years ago, uh, we brought the family down to, uh, to Anaheim and he lives out in this place called Dana Point. He surfs almost every day now. Like he, he lives 
he's got a great he's got a great spot overlooking the Pacific Ocean, and he goes down these steps, and he's one of those guys too. Like I told you, like when he does something, he wants to be the best. He yeah. goes and surfs with some of the best surfers in California because where he lives is is one of the best surfs there is. So that's where they all hang out. So he picked up surfing, and he's a really good surfer. Hey, Yorkie, uh, what? How old are you when you retired? Thirty-eight. Yeah. So older than most. Yeah. Um, I look at Meth and Bobby were like thirty-five and whatever, and I'm like, is there concern when you guys retire of how much life you have left? and aren't sure what to do. Oh my God, Wally. Yes. Yes. It's, it's especially, and this is just my personal opinion, especially guys that play junior hockey, because when, when you play junior hockey, um, you're just, you're playing hockey. Yeah. You're going to high school, but right. you're just, right. you're playing so much. And then you transition right into the pros. If, if you're good enough to make it, and then let's say you've been doing it for whatever, 15 years. It's 15 years of being told what to do, when to be there, summer you work out. You're extremely selfish, too, because your whole life's about you. <laughs> like, so you got to be yeah. like, like when you're it's just, true. it's, 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 you're just, so when it's done and it doesn't matter how much money you have, um, you're just in a, you're just in a spot where you're very, I don't know if lonely is the right word, but you're just, there's a huge part of you that's gone. And then you got to figure it out mm. how to, well, that's why you see so many guys get into gambling problems and getting to some addiction problems. It's just, you've got this thing inside you that you can't replace because you've been, you've been doing hockey for so long at the highest level with teammates, with people. And that's why you see a lot of guys get into bad, bad places in their life. It's just, it's, um, it's, it happens so quick. Um, but that's why, like, you, you, you know, it's people that have a good support network around them, good family, good wife. Um, those people usually figure it out. But, man, I remember when I retired, I, I was sleeping in for the first four months till 11 o'clock every day. And I just finally said to myself, what the fuck? Like, I got to stop this. I mean, got to do something. But some guys never figure it out. Uh, yeah. But you need, you need a good support staff. And, listen, hey, guys have a lot of money. I, I, like it's everybody in life has yep. their issues, but I that's that to me is why players of all sports run into problems. It's just that's you, you see. I I would think you'd see it a little bit less with guys that, that went to college because they've had to balance school and hockey, and they've they've got something yep. that 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 they've done before. Where it's um, that's why I'm a big proponent of, of of guys that are playing right now to do something while they're playing take at least a course, do something, get in, like, you, you got to have a plan because no matter how much money you have, when you're done, you got to fill that void and you need something. Yep. It's, and there's like, an, you guys are adrenaline junkies for a lot of it, right? You're playing, yeah. playing in front of 20,000 people nightly. Like you yeah. don't have that anymore. No one's coming like, man, come do this for us. Or can you do like, you don't have that, those people after you all the time. Um, it is it it is interesting to watch. We should do a, a retirement show at some point, uh, <laughs> just just to discuss it. it because it's it's a fascinating thing. There's a documentary, I think it's on Netflix. I saw it about NFL players and how quickly within like three to five years afterwards they're yeah. totally broke. Oh man, it's it's you want. I'll tell you the smartest. One of the things I did while I was playing uh, is I the NHL Players Association. They have this program. that's called Life After Hockey. And I, I went in their broadcasting program, and it was awesome. It was the first time they did it. They offered it, and it was yeah. myself. It was a pretty cool group I was with. Myself, Bill Ranford, Glenn Anderson, Gary Volk, Bob McGill. Um, I'm trying to remember who else was in that group. Uh, a few other guys. We went down to Quinnipiac University, with great school. and we National did champions. A, yep. We did an, like a really intense one-week up, up at seven till six, seven at night, intensive broadcasting workshop where they wow. put you in the uncomfortable situations and they showed you, it was basically a crash course on broadcasting. Like we did a mock, a mock sports center where you were the person doing sports center. Then we went, this was kind of funny. We went to an independent league baseball game. So like not AAA, the league below. And we had to each do two innings of play by play. 
So imagine you're at an independent league baseball game. You know none of the players. No. And you're, you got to do the broadcast. And uh. and so they made us do that. And then we had to do an interview. I remember I interviewed B- Bill Ranford. We sat down. And I, I got to find this tape. I wish you put it on the show because I'm freaking horrible doing it. <laughs> um, because everybody thinks it's so easy to interview somebody. One of the most difficult things to do if you don't know what you're doing in the broadcast industry. But that's... I did that while I was in my last year in Boston. I went and did did it in the summer. So then after that year ended, I had a little bit of experience doing some stuff that that maybe gave me a leg up. But then you got to you, you got to you got to take onus for yourself too. Like you you can't just right. sit back and think things are going to come to you and and be a victim and and you yep. got to go out, you got to make calls, you got to do stuff, you got to network and I I did that too. Like I called called Team 1200. I said uh I said, you guys should do, because uh, they would call me all the time to go on as a guest. So I said to the, the manager at the time, why don't we do a playoff show? Uh, Ottawa's in the finals. I could come in and guest host. They're like, that's a great idea. <laughs> so that, that's how I started doing radio. So it in 07. 07, I started doing radio. And then, uh-huh. then that summer, I went and took four uh, public speaking courses online. Um, uh-huh. So like, I did some stuff and then started calling Sportsnet, trying to do stuff. And so you can't just sit there if, if you want to do something. Like, there's only so many coaching jobs. There's so many uh, player development jobs. Like, it's, 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 uh, it, that, that business is a lot tougher to get into than people think. Yes, it is. I agree. Um, all right. We will uh, let you get to your uh, tea time. Um, I'm off to New Hampshire for a hockey tournament. So um, playing for the Boston Junior Whalers is my kid. Uh, they have a great logo, so that's why I think he wants to play for them. They got Looks the original like... whale. They got the uh... yeah, yeah. It's multicolored. It's or it's yellow. It's orange and green and white. It's it's actually it's pretty cool. So um, I'll see you uh, when we return. Um, have a great weekend, Yorkie, and everybody right. else. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Have a good see one, everybody. Coming in hot is brought to you by Botano.ca. Please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to never miss an episode.